What's up you guys, it's Two Bricks and finally, after weeks of work, I'm so proud and so glad to be able to bring you my completed Stinger Mantis version 2.0 um, with the instructions now available, you guys can check out the link in the description and it'll take you to Rebrickable where you can get a hold of the instructions of how to build this, a, a digital parts list, or sorry, a digital um, studio uh, model file which includes the entire ship uh, in the program that I built it in and then the um, parts list as well so that you can easily order the parts that you need to uh, build one yourself and also you can customize, make modifications, color swaps, uh, anything that you like using the studio file and then you could just order those parts uh, as well and just kind of use what I have as a base um, since you know a big part of the game is to customize your ship and that's something that you could very easily do I feel like. Um, a really simple modification would be for example you could say all of these blue sections uh, you could select those all by color and you could make them I don't know any other color you want dark red, gray, black, uh, anything you like. Same goes for the white um, that's something that you can easily do in studio and uh, I think it's a really cool feature so you can get definitely play around with that and have a lot of fun with it. Um, the instructions, uh, I just made a fun little base here just to put this on just to show you guys um, inspired by Bogano um, and then I have the figures at the front here those are not included in the instructions the instructions are just for the ship itself and everything contained within it uh, which I'm going to show you guys right now so before I ramble on too long let's just dive in and take a look. All right you guys so before we get into looking at all of the details and modifications that I've made to the ship I just wanted to give you a quick rundown of the crew that I have created so far. Uh, we'll start here at the end with Night Sister Marin. Um, she was somebody that uh, I really liked the outfit that she had in the game and I felt like when I saw the the Zori Bliss um, minifigure from uh, The Rise of Skywalker I thought that her torso would fit perfectly with that because she's got kind of that gold ornate uh, design on top of the the dark red so I just pinched that torso and then just gave her some dark uh, gray arms and legs um, and then I didn't feel like there's really a good hair piece at least not one that I had access to um, so I just went ahead and gave her the hood because at the beginning of the game she's much more mysterious and she has her hood up uh, pretty much the whole time so I feel like that worked out pretty well and of course just the, the green studs represent her uh, Night Sister magic. And then here we have Grease. Uh, he's got the uh, medium short legs from the new Harry Potter collectible minifigures and uh, the face of the character of Pau from Rogue One. Um, he's that big wide mouth kind of alien. Uh, I wasn't able to give him four arms because um, I do have a single figure that has four arms that is this kind of size. Um, that is uh, the little guy from Solo. Um, Oh heck, I forget his name now. Uh, the little monkey guy from <laughs> Solo A Star Wars Story. Um, but his arms are dark blue and uh, first of all, those are really rare, expensive parts to get a hold of, so I didn't want to crack the arms uh, and taking them off and putting them on this torso. But also they're the wrong color, so I didn't really love that either. Um, I do have a, a quick and dirty kind of um, really, really basic lame solution, which I'll show you right now. And that is to just attach these um, these relatively new clear pieces with the little uh, bar holder attachment so that they can fit into the hand. And then just attaching a second pair of arms to basically just plug in behind that. And uh, it, like I said, it's pretty quick and dirty. It's pretty lame. Uh, it doesn't really get the effect across the way I would want. So typically, uh, I'm just gonna ignore the fact that he has four arms and just stick with the two and you know, that'll just be that. Um, the hair piece, again, also isn't ideal. Um, I tried out one of those short beard pieces that they use for the uh, the dwarves in the Lord of the Rings series. Uh, turned it around backwards, but it just looked like he was wearing like a, a collar. It just, it didn't feel right. So Grease is probably the least, well, no, not probably. <laughs> Grease is the least accurate character in this lineup, but I wanted to have just a short uh, gray alien with a big mouth. Uh, and a red shirt to represent Grease, and that's what I have, and I'm just gonna go ahead and stick with that. So next up we have Seer, uh, Cal's mentor character, and the first time that we meet her, she's hanging out of the side of actually this ramp while the, uh, while the ship is in flight, and shooting a blaster at the, at the um, second sister, attempting to aid Cal, so definitely had to give her the, uh, the blaster figure. I'm using another Harry Potter um, torso here to get the kind of vest over the uh, the gray shirt look. Um, this is actually a, like a sand blue colored shirt under here, but I think with the gray sleeves it kind of sells it well enough. Um, she has a really unique look and you know I used, uh, oh also Finn's uh, hair piece from The Rise of Skywalker worked out really well. 
And luckily there was a figure with kind of a semi-stern expression and some pretty well-defined cheekbones in this kind of olive skin color. So I think that really works well for her character and um, I'm really happy with how this one turned out. I think she's actually my favorite uh, depiction that I have. I think she's probably the most accurate to uh, the on-screen appearance. And then uh, like before, I still have Cal. Uh, you saw him in the first, uh, first video. Uh, nothing's changed about BB-8. <laughs> nothing's changed about BD-1. Um, but with Cal, I just gave him the one brown glove because a lot of people pointed out that he typically wears that glove on the one hand. And then I gave him a black lightsaber hilt, which looks a lot closer to his default uh, lightsaber look. And I think that that works out really well. So there is Cal. All right, you guys, so taking a look at the ship, I've pushed it back as far as it'll go so that I can give you guys a good sense of the overview of the ship. Um, I did end up improving a little bit of the overall proportions. The main thing that I did uh, to change the shape of it to make it more accurate is to heighten this wing by, I think, about six studs compared to what it was before. Um, that was something that was really bothering me. I couldn't quite put my finger on it, but the proportions didn't feel exactly 100% correct. And uh, adjusting that wing really helped to bring that all together for me because when I was looking at it in the game, uh, the wing, if you were to rotate it forward, uh, the top of this wing should come down past the front of the ship. And now I feel like that is what the proportions uh, reflect. The second change that I made is a little bit of a color scheme change, whereas before I had um, the white continuing up to the front here, um, I just switched this out to have the blue go a little bit further back. Um, that's more accurate to the uh, in-game model um, for the default color scheme. So I decided to make that change. I think it looks a lot better. And I think just this curve feels um, more accurate in here too. Uh, then I just uh, went back and analyzed some of the Greeblies a little bit more closely and tried to capture them a little bit more accurately, at least in terms of the distribution of where most of the detail is, which is like here, here, and then up at the front section here. This part in here is relatively plain. So I wanted to just kind of reflect that. And then also, uh, previously I had missed this kind of uh, really um, pretty unique, uh, interesting looking vent detail that was back behind this section. This was all just um, blue before. So that helped an awful lot with that. Going down to the wing, um, I just uh, I ended up redesigning a whole bunch of this section back here. And just one of the small things that I did is to have the wing um, just sit a little bit more tightly in here and to extend down the white color scheme because there's supposed to be this kind of stripe that runs through here and just kind of cleanly extend that through uh, in a much more pleasing way. So I'm really happy with that. Um, and I should also note that there are a couple of areas on here where I've actually made substitutions for the digital file and for the instructions, like for example, this piece that are not reflected just because I don't have those pieces on hand. Um, most of them are really, really tiny little aesthetic switches, like for example, this uh, bracket piece in here, instead of being dark gray, it is blue to match and just kind of have that color scheme really nicely flow down through there. Um, but yeah, the, uh, the one kind of big change that's obvious here is uh, this part right here um, is a pretty old and not super common part. And I actually don't like it as much as the one that I have in here anyway, which is just two of these, which are much more common and much easier to get a hold of. Um, so those are just in here now, swapping out for that. Uh, I tiled off the front of this uh, ring section because I felt like that was looking a little bit rough before with just the stud showing. And I did add um, quite a bit more of a balance between tiled off and studded areas back here. Previously, this was pretty much all studs. And then I'll get into a special little detail in here in a minute, but um, essentially, I can just show you from the outside, uh, I got the windows that I wasn't able to get in there before. Um, Every single window that is supposed to be in the ship now, uh, there's this one, there's uh, this one up here at the front, there's uh, one underneath the floor, which I'll show you uh, in a minute. I can't get under there now, but I'm gonna take the lid off, I'll show that to you. Uh, and these ones are all transparent and can actually let light through them, um, accurate to the way that it is in the game. So should you decide to put a lighting kit or something in here, like some kind of aftermarket lighting solution, uh, the light will come through the appropriate spots and that's something that I really, really wanted in the beginning, and I didn't think I'd be able to figure it out, but luckily uh, I did. Something else that I added, uh, which is kind of a, um, a new section that I was really happy with, was something inside of here. Um, because in the game, customization is such a huge part of the game, I decided to include an area for the accessories for different lightsaber hilt options for Cal. 
and also a couple of customization uh, color options for BD1 because um, he just has the uh, he just has the red uh, stud in there, and so you can switch that out for either blue or yellow, just to give him a more custom look. And then also an extra lightsaber blade, which enables Cal to enable his um, double lightsaber mode, uh, or uh, double bladed lightsaber, or dual lightsaber wielding, uh, like you can do in the game. I uh, didn't have room to include uh, any of the, um, you know, kind of extra blade colors or anything like that. But at least there's an area that kind of represents the workshop that exists in this back section of the ship, um, which I wasn't able to include in the interior. Um, and I still wasn't able to because this is all solid, super dense, just brick and plates and structure in here. So <laughs> there's no room for a little, uh, for the little sleeping area for Cal uh, back there. And then I wanted to show you guys back here. Um, like I said, I ended up redesigning the way that the wings connect and this whole wing section almost entirely um, for two reasons. One, for extra strength and stability. And two, I wanted to add in the feature of um, having the wings uh, sort of lock into place when uh, the bottom wing swings underneath. And when that's deployed, <coughs> I, wanted to have, um, I wanted to have it not just kind of flop around loose down there. So what I ended up doing is including this, uh, these two studs right here, which key in right here to this top half of the wing. So when this is all folded up, um, they click together and it gives you enough tension that it holds itself um, so it doesn't just freely kind of move around. Um, and I ended up kind of, uh, again, cleaning up the color scheme a lot back here and then just having uh, some extra stability with extra brackets and side mounted plate pieces, which just hold the whole thing together and keep it really, really sturdy. Next, I want to show you the interior. And back here, you can see that uh, this all pops off just like before. Um, and one improvement that I did make is that there are now uh, two studs here and here, which hold the roof in and actually keep it um, you know, it actually locks in with a couple of studs. So when it's on there, uh, it doesn't want to just fall off should you tip the ship towards the wrong angle. Uh, so that's really crucial. And then in here, I ended up really hollowing out the underside of this section, which previously had a lot more plates uh, thickness in there, which was for strength and stability. But I was able to find a way to strengthen it up. And it's actually even stronger in the, um, in the version that you'll be getting with your instructions than this right here, because I have a couple more solid plates that run right through here that uh, I just didn't have on hand. So um, that's something that I did so that you could accommodate uh, crew members sitting in the chairs, which you can now do. So uh, I'll show you that at the end. I'll put all the crew members in there, and we can close it up, and you can see how that all looks. But now that we're seeing inside of here, you can see that I've made some improvements. Like I said before, the windows, um, I think that was crucial to me to get that right, because it really just felt like something that if I could do the ones at the front, and I can do the ones, uh, the one on the roof, why could I not figure out a way to do these? And it ended up being so simple. Just stacking up these um, tiles, these clear tiles on top of these clear plates, and just embedding them into the wall structure. Uh, it really just was as simple as that. And there you go, you have windows that you can look through. So really, really happy about that. Um, then moving on to the inside here, I did end up adding a little bit of extra detail. So we have the correct amount of seats in here now because I uh, went back and looked at the game again and there's three stools in there, not two. Um, there's now not technically enough room for a figure to kind of fully you know, pose like they're walking up here, but you, know, you can always pretend that they're just sneaking by that chair or you can just remove the chair if uh, you're really wanting to pose figures up on uh, the stairs right there. Um, but the kitchen is largely unchanged. That stuff is all... Um, pretty much the same as it was before, although I did adjust the spacing of these little, um, I'm just going to call them like cereal box, <laughs> cereal dispensers is what they look like to me, um, to where they're uh, sitting at the kind of proper spacing. Uh, there's still not three of them, there's still only two, but you know, what can you do? You can't have everything. Um, so the, the rotating uh, little section here for the, the planet selection feature is still there. Um, I feel like I don't think that I made any changes really to this except to no, you know what? I feel like this is the same since the last time you saw it. Um, but yeah, these are the this is the seating area where you uh, normally find Marin sitting in her uh, crew seat, and then uh, the cockpit is largely unchanged, other than the fact that under here now you can see, like I mentioned before, the floor-mounted window is now in there, and you can uh, totally see the ground as you're taking off, and that's something that I think is huge. 
And I really, really wanted to make that happen, uh, like with the ones on the side. It just ended up requiring a little bit of reconfiguration of the plates and the way that it was done, but it actually ended up being not that difficult. So I'm very glad that I did it. So let me show you guys how the figures look in their seats. All right, so here is everyone situated. I just placed BD-1 down here, uh, sitting next to Marin, And it's so satisfying to see Marin sitting in her seat there, um, you know, as she does towards the end of the game, once you've unlocked her character. And uh, just really cool to kind of get the full crew view coming through here. Um, oh, actually, I, one thing I forgot to mention, I did redesign this doorway. It's a really simple thing, but it just has a much more accurate, uh, just sort of regular door shape now, whereas before it was uh, a sloped kind of design, which wasn't that accurate. Um, so yeah, there is Seer in her co-pilot, or I guess navigator seat. I'm not exactly sure what her position is on the crew. Uh, there's Cal in the passenger seat, and Grease is piloting his ship. So he has the little flight yoke down there, and I just redesigned his little console so that he has a uh, a little gunnery position and a little flight yoke as well. And then, you know, Cal's just got his standard little kind of control panel in front of him that uh, I'm not really sure what those buttons do. I don't think he ever presses them in the game, so. But um, yeah, the full crew complement is in here. Uh, well, not exactly the entire full crew, because down here I included a little critter that uh, represents the little um, thing that looks like a loaf cat, but I'm not exactly sure. Uh, I forget the name of it now specifically. Um, but it's a little guy that you can unlock in the game. And I left a couple of little spots to place him around. Um, it's just a Harry Potter uh, Niffler figure from the collectible miniseries, but uh, you can kind of place him around in little spots just to represent that uh, fun little creature kind of scuttling around the ship. So I think that's pretty fun. Um, but yeah, there's the entire crew in their seats. And let me just go ahead and prove to you guys that they do in fact fit. Let's go ahead and place uh, the lid back on. Now, when you're Putting the lid on, I like to hook in the front lip first and then uh, secure down the back and just push down on those two studs. And that just locks it all securely in. And there you go. The roof is on. Everyone's in. You can kind of see a little bit down in there, I think. Not the greatest view, but um, there everyone is. Ready to take off and take down the Empire. All right, and I've now flipped the ship upside down to show you guys the new and improved uh, landing gear. That is something that I uh, was probably the least satisfied with on the old version of the ship and I think has had the most dramatic improvement in terms of functionality anyway. Um, this uh, leg is a little bit further forward and now tucks back in a little bit more streamlined and then when you put this down, uh, the kind of flaps to hold it in place, it really is flush in there and from, you know, from the bottom it's super well tucked away and I'm really, really happy with how that looks. And, um, you know, the support that you get with just uh, these studs right down here, it really is enough to support, you know, all of this weight at the front um, because the back section of this is so dense with parts, it's actually much, much heavier than the front section. So it's the ship kind of wants to sit further back anyway. Like I would say the center of gravity is probably right here. So that's perfect for the situation of where the landing gear is. Um, but this part right here, this is a, se a separate sub-assembly that previously um, would essentially want to tear itself off of the bottom of the ship the longer that I would leave it standing. And the problem with that was I have the sub-assembly that's plugged in and then I had the, um, the legs were being stopped by essentially uh, some plates that were attached to the ship themselves. And so there was this force that was um, competing against itself where the legs were pushing against the ship itself and then that was causing the whole assembly to want to pop out of the bottom and just creating this um, kind of instability. So uh, I ended up going through a lot of different iterations, uh, but what I ended up doing to solve that is to just integrate these 45 degree angle plates in here. And so when um, that's part of the whole kind of leg uh, sub-assembly in here. And so when the legs are deployed, uh, this bottom surface butts up against these 45 degree plates and that um, the weight is uh, redistributed back into this structure and does not want to pull itself away from the ship. So that was huge. It took me a really long time to figure that out, but uh, I wasn't willing to put something out there on the market for you guys to purchase and build for yourself and have the thing not work properly. So even though it's such a seemingly simple solution, just <laughs> put something in here to support it within the structure itself. Um, I, you know, I'm not the smartest guy. It takes me a while to figure things out and I got there in the end. So this does, uh, this does still 
tuck away fully like it did before. We get that nice rounded shape on the bottom. And so when the landing gear is all put away nicely, it's, it's really, really slick. Uh, super happy with the way that that looks. Another major improvement that I've made is that the internal structure surrounding the wing housing here um, and this kind of portion right here that um, buffets up against the wing when it's down uh, is all incredibly strong now compared to what it was before and or just incredibly strong in general and it has just a ton of interlocking plates that run through um, not only the bottom let me just put this down uh, not only the bottom of this section right here into the ship but like all the way through into this section under here where uh, this is all just kind of solid support structure that all interlocks and make sure that none of this is going anywhere. Um, primarily because when the wing comes back up to its resting position, uh, when it's in free, uh, free transform mode, I guess, um, you know, when this is uh, disengaged, this is the only thing that's preventing the wing from just flying through and snapping off. And it's also the only thing that kind of holds the whole back end of the ship to the front end. Like this whole section right here is only connected through this section right here. So it had to be really, really densely uh, structured and planned out. And it was a nightmare to figure out and take apart and reassemble uh, multiple times. But it was, again, totally worth it in the end because you guys deserve um, the absolute best when you're going to be purchasing something and supporting an artist. Um, I think that you should get their best. So uh, it did take a while, but I'm super duper happy with it. I think the improvement um, overall aesthetically is nice, but I think without this part and without the landing gear adjustments, I, I wouldn't have felt comfortable um, giving you guys these instructions. So there we go. That's that. Oh, and I just want to show you guys, if you didn't see the first video, the back side of this wing uh, is still uh, anti-studs. I know that some people do hate that, it drives them crazy, but this really is the best way that I can think of to have a wing that's really, really strong is to build it um, this way where you have, um, essentially it's sideways built. Um, a lot of that plays into the way that the Technic beams run through here uh, and just hold the whole wing in place. And so I just felt like um, this was the best solution. Uh, I did all, uh, also just improve on the proportions of the painted areas as well. I have this dark gray area in here to kind of help continue this line through here, which is sort of represented on the ship. I think it's probably a little bit of a lighter shade than this, but um, yeah, I think this all looks really good now. Uh, and then of course I had to move the, the stripes up due to the fact that I extended this whole wing, like I said, I think either four or six studs, but yeah. Uh, proportionally it all works out way better and the same functionality that was in there before exists where um, this wing moves up independently because uh, like I said there's only those two studs that kind of engage when this is in its deployed mode at the bottom uh, kind of hanging down uh, so let me just give you guys a shot of that really quick and then we'll wrap this up all right guys and as with before if you do disengage this little sliding locking mechanism right here the wings are now completely loose, and if you don't hold onto them, they will just fall down. But fortunately, with the strengthening work that I did in here, um, that will not result in the whole ship just collapsing on you. Uh, it will hold itself. Um, if you do that a bunch of times, you may start to notice that some portions of the wing plating want to start to pull themselves apart. And the solution to that is to just come in here with your fingers and just crunch them back down. Um, but honestly, it's sturdy enough that I don't see that really being a problem. And then with the couple of studs that I have in there, I can lock the top wing uh, and the bottom wing, as you can see, just kind of stays where it's at. So that works out really, really well. Sorry that this is such an awkward angle uh, <laughs> to shoot at and to show you guys. But yeah, you can see in there that the, the bottom wing is now uh, holding on. Uh, and a couple of people asked me last time how swishable this thing is. Uh, I'll show you guys. Let's do a swishability test. All right, so here you guys can see that the wings are disengaged. You can just freely move up and down. I'm just holding the entire ship up by just holding the body, which is pretty dense and strong. This whole section back here is really strong, but I wouldn't advise putting the entire weight of the structure on it. You can do it, uh, but it's just going to unnecessarily stress the structure back here. So I just highly recommend you just hold it from this middle section um, or just really anywhere on the bottom. It's perfectly swishable that way. You can just go ahead and pretend you're coming in for a landing. You guys can engage the top wing. Keep that sturdy and you can just fly it around like this if you want to and if you want to pretend that you're coming in and doing that cinematic game landing you can just control the wing descent yourself and then deploy the landing gear 
like so. Just unravel everything. You can just pull this up. I'll just pull right through. And then you can go ahead and land the ship. So it's really easy. It's, it's robust. It doesn't require a lot of uh, careful finessing. And when you want to just re-engage the top wing, just pull this up. And there you go. One thing I forgot to show you guys last time is how does it scale next to my Millennium Falcon? And I think, honestly, uh, pretty well. I think they look like they're about appropriately sized to one another. And if you happen to have purchased and built this one, which a lot of you guys have, and I really appreciate that. Thank you guys. Um, and you're looking to get this one right here. Uh, just something to keep in mind is that uh, the parts for this usually uh, I found run from about uh, 300 to 350 or even $400, depending on the sellers that you're able to get a hold of. Um, this model is far less dense. This has uh, somewhere in the realm of 2,000 pieces. I forget the exact number, but I'll place those uh, that info down in the description. Um, and it's going to cost you somewhere in the region of $200. So it's, um, it's a fair bit lighter in, in terms of uh, what it's going to cost you on your wallet. And actually physically too, this model is really, really heavy and dense. This one is much easier to handle. So it's just something to keep in mind. All right, you guys, so there you have it. My two bricks rendition of the Latero Spaceworks Luxury XL Yacht from Jedi Fallen Order, probably the best Star Wars game that's ever been made. Uh, I really poured a lot of love and effort and uh, thought into this model, and I really hope that those of you guys who do end up purchasing the instructions have a blast building it and playing with it and having it on your shelf for a long time to come. Uh, I know I'm gonna be keeping this model around. I'm definitely a big fan of it. Um, I really thank you guys so much, and just know that the purchases that you do make go towards sustaining the channel and growing it for the future, and I definitely hope to have a big future on this channel. Um, you know, eventually I would like Two Bricks to be what I do for a living. And uh, if you guys want to help to support um, me on the way to making that vision a reality, that is something that uh, I really appreciate. And obviously, I understand that times are tough right now and um, people are struggling with not being able to work, et cetera, et cetera. So of course, I totally understand if um, people want to like wait on it or whatever you guys need to do. And, you know, naturally, <laughs> this is um, probably one of the strangest times in at least my living memory and I know that a lot of you guys are probably feeling the same way so uh, of course no pressure there I just wanted to get this out to you guys because I know a lot of people have been asking for it and so I'm glad to finally have it done um, so thank you guys so much uh, I think that I will be announcing the next build of this scale soon because you know this scales pretty well to my Falcon and I think I really enjoy building at this kind of um, slightly bigger than Lego playset scale and uh, I have another Star Wars ship in mind that I want to tackle. Um, guess it's down in the comments. You guys can fight it out down there and see who guesses correctly. Um, but yeah, that's it for today, you guys. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. If you did, I really appreciate it. Do all the YouTube stuff. You guys know I don't have to tell you. And uh, I'll see you again on the next video. Thanks, you guys. Oh, and may the Force be with you.